What would be a funny thing to say to a surgeon before anesthesia kicks in five seconds later? Story 1. I've had a number of surgeries. Here's my history of fun twilight moments. Surgery 1, 2 or 3 years old. I guess it was 1988, so I was 2. I just remember being in the room with the light there, the ceiling looked black from where I was, and I remember thinking how vastly different this room looked from the rest of the hospital. Surgery 2, I was 9. The anesthesiologist was super friendly. It was asking me about my dog last I remember. Surgery 3, I was 22. It was time to try to mess with a surgeon or anesthesiologist. Can you film the surgery so I have a copy? No. Oh, okay, well, can you... Out. I was going to ask him for an audio recording. I clearly had begun to slip. Surgery 4, circumcision of 24. I was in the OR and the anesthesiologist was there. He threw the gas mask on me, never had that before, and began. I was getting really loopy and the gas mask smelled like diesel fuel burning. I remember telling him, I'm not counting back from 10. I'm going to fight this. You can't. Surgery 5, two weeks ago. The anesthesiologist began pushing some meds in my IV and in a handful of other stuff, including propofol. I made a Michael Jackson joke and asked him if I was about to leave for a while. He told me no. I began scheming up a plan as I was talking to him. The idiot or some nurse was cleverly pushing other meds into me at the same time and I had no idea. The next thing I remember, I was back in the recovery room. I think the next time, since the surgeon isn't usually in the room while the anesthesiologist is working his magic, I'm going to say something like, if I don't make it on the table, tell the doctor he's a magnificent lover. If it's a woman, I'll say, tell the doctor that she's the greatest underground MMA fighter I've ever seen. Either way, it's much more fun to mess with the nurses or anesthesiologist in the recovery room. Once you realize that you're out of surgery, despite the hangover from the meds and the morphine coursing through you, you do reach a point of lucidity, if not momentarily. The anesthesiologist visits me in the recovery room because I have a heart condition and they always like to give me a debrief and how my pacemaker did while I was under. Two weeks ago, I woke up and asked if I had surgery yet. I can never tell. Seriously, it's like you blink and you're in a whole other room. And when they say yes, I ask them if the gender change went well and if everything looks realistic. Story 2. The last time I tried to say something funny right before surgery, they were about to put me out and I said, Go easy on me, doc. It's my first time. I gave a little chuckle and so did the doctor. He then picked up a scalpel and said, Don't worry, it's my first time too. And then I promptly blacked out. I would give the doctor an award for that one. Story 3. I was being put under for a wisdom tooth extraction a few years back and it was the first time I'd ever had anesthesia. They used the injection method rather than gas, so they told me to watch the fluids go in so I could gauge when I'd feel sleepy. I had this idea that I would say something like, Oh no, doc, I've lost my eyesight, or something else preposterous. Before I could collect my thoughts, I just immediately blurted, Well, crap. My voice progressively getting lower and passed out. Story 4. Not before the knockout, but after I woke up and happened to recognize the nurse's last name, the same as my friend's wife's maiden name. Creepy voice me. Hey, do you have a daughter? Nurse. Yes, I do. Creepy voice me. I bet I can guess her name. Nurse. Okay. Creepy voice me. Is it Whitney? Nurse in shock. Uh, yeah. Smiling face me. I know. Giggle, giggle. Then she ran and got my wife and she had to explain how we knew her daughter. Story 5. I actually did the same thing before both of mine. I managed to get out. I'll see you in the future, doc. Or something. Either way, once the meds kicked in, I didn't care. I actually just remembered I didn't get to say anything the first time. As I was about to lay down on the table, they were stepping my arms down, and I kid you not. The woman said, Okay, put your arms out like a T. Yeah, it's like you're being crucified. I only got out. What? Then I woke up and looked at the first woman, and I said, I'm super hungry. Oh, crap, sorry. She laughed and gave me goldfish. Not worth it at all. I'd only be happy if I got cinnamon toast crunch from all that. Story 6. True story. I went to get my wisdom teeth pulled. The roots were impacted, so I had to be completely put under. Anyway, they put the mask on at exactly the same time as one of my best friends walks in. Didn't know she was a nurse there or she had moved gigs recently. I say, Jesus, seems like they'll let anyone work here these days. Before I finish with, how have you been? I didn't know you were working here. I passed out. The doctor, nurse, and anesthesiologist are standing there in scrubs looking at each other. My friend told me she wasn't really sure what to say, but they made her go and called the other nurse in for the day, and I laid there in the chair for an extra hour while they waited for a new nurse. Psst, guess what? This video is sponsored by none other than me and my awesome crew at Rufus Rugs. We're the masters of creating custom, hand-tufted rugs that truly capture who you are. Whether you're looking to turn one of our intriguing thumbnails into a rug, for purely academic reasons, of course, or you're eager to transform your room with some epic anime-inspired designs, we can get it done for you. These are all handmade by me and the team from Canada. No dropshipping BS here. Real, handmade custom rugs by me and my friends. Click the first link in the description to learn more. Story 7. 
When I was 15, I opted for circumcision. My doctor, Dr. Lenz, was the funniest dude I've ever met. Told me my junk was going to look like Frankenweiner for a month or two, but it's cool. Anyway, I'm in the OR on Christmas Eve, and I feel the anesthesia starting to kick in. Before Dr. Lenz walks out, I shout or slur, Doc, please just take care of the little guy. And he stops, turns around, bows to me, and says, As if he were my own. I left once, then passed out. Story 8. Not exactly when it went under, but when it was coming to after a procedure. I remember waking up in a room with my hospital gown on and asking for some water. A few minutes later, they said I could get up and go to the car, so I put on my shoes and walked out to my ride. Several days later, I was thinking about it and thought to myself, Wait, when did I take off the gown and put on my clothes? So I asked my mother-in-law, who was in the room with me when that occurred, and she told me, The nurse told you that you could get dressed, so you stood up and ripped off your gown in front of me and two nurses. We all kind of covered our eyes since you were standing there completely bare, and we started to leave the room, to which you yelled, It's not like it's anything you haven't seen before. So apparently the people who sort of knocked me out have no shame. I think that situation really isn't like anything they've seen before. Story 9. Here's one that actually happened. My grandmother's sister was getting an epidural done for one of her children. When she came to, everybody involved couldn't stop giggling around her, and she had no idea why. Until it comes out later that while she was she had repeated one of my great-grandfather's favorite problems of logic, if you're shoved up to your neck backward up a sheep's behind and there's a bear coming to eat you, what do you do? Do you pull your head in or bite the sheep's behind to make it run faster? It's a shame he bit the dust before I was born, that nah, man. Story 10. I have been put under twice in my life. I was about to be put under for my wisdom teeth extraction when some dude in a lab coat says to me, just count backwards from 10, like in the movies. In a worried tone, I replied, will it hurt? He smiled and looked at me like he had heard this before, but he humored me. He'll be out, so you won't feel a thing during the surgery. I gathered all of my remaining energy and willpower to appear as coherent and altogether as possible, and then replied in a relieved tone, Okay, good. I'm kind of shy, so go easy on me, doc. I winked and then blacked out to an uproar of laughter. I'm a stray male. The doctor met my wife right before they took me into the operating room. <laughs> Lol. Story 11. When I had ACL reconstruction surgery, I was supposed to be clocked out before I was wheeled into the OR. Me, being the hormonal son of a gun that I am, resist it, and get into the AOR and my eyes wander around because my body was absolutely incapacitated, and I see the nurse take this massive needle and jam it into my thigh for the nerve block, and I guess she saw me wince and replies, Oh, you weren't supposed to see that. My eyes without control slowly turn over to the ceiling. My last memory of going into surgery is watching the smoke detector grow a face and crawl across the ceiling. Story 12. I have a pretty funny story about being given anesthetics. The last time I was given anesthetics for surgery was for my wisdom teeth a few months ago, and the last time before that was for a broken ankle in 6th grade. I'm 20 now, so I kind of forgot how strong the effects were. So as I'm about to be put under for surgery, and as the dental assistant was putting an IV in my arm, we were chatting about random stuff and exchanging small talk. She explained that it would take a minute or so for the anesthesia to kick in, and after about a minute, she asked me how I was feeling. I could feel the effects kicking in, and I was in the middle of saying, I'm feeling pretty tired. But by the time I said pretty, I was high as can be, and my sentence trailed off. I passed out a few seconds later and completely forgot about what happened pre-surgery when I woke up. So as my mom drove us back home, I remembered our conversation before I passed out and can imagine how uncomfortable the dental assistant was thinking. It probably had some weird cross-dressing <laughs> that was only revealed by the anesthetics. Story 13. As an anesthesiologist, let me clear some things up here. Rarely is the surgeon even in the OR during induction, going to sleep time. Usually just the anesthesiologist, OR nurse, and person that helps with instruments for the surgery are present. I've heard and seen every crazy thing imaginable, including people's deepest fears and secrets. Mostly, this is caused by a pre-medication such as versed removing inhibitions. Every now and again, I'll hear something that will even make the entire room chuckle. 99.99% .99 of the time, whatever you say has already been said and isn't nearly as funny or original as you think. I often hear from patients in pre-op that their biggest concern is saying something they will regret, and I always reassure them the majority of people talk a lot less, and the ones that do talk usually hold relatively normal conversations for a brief period of time of getting a pre-medication to going under full general anesthesia. Now we're talking about a case involving moderate or deep sedation and not general anesthesia. It's completely different. If I were to have surgery and the anesthesiologist did not know me or my profession, I'm sure I'd do my best to prank him by saying something completely obscure about anesthesia and just give him a wink. Please talk to your anesthesiologist on the day of surgery about your complete medical history. It all matters. Let him or her determine what is important to your care. As an anesthesiologist, do you not just spend 90% of your time doing Sudoku and occasionally prodding the bleeping machine to stop the bleeping noise? That sounds like easy work, but not as easy as leaving a like on this video and subscribing to the channel right now. Story 14 I sort of reverted back to my man instincts when I was put under when they had to do something to wisdom teeth to get them out. It was bad. The last thing I remember was laughing at a stupid joke and then my whole body got cold and it was suddenly like I was very, very freaking buzzed. 
My body went limp, my arm shot out to grab onto anything. The only thing that I ended up grabbing was a nurse's melon. She held my wrist and said, It's okay, it's okay, and gently pulled me off her. I was out. Shortly after surgery, I was wheeled back into the recovery room. All the nurses were red-faced and giggling, and I felt the need to announce just how hard I was hallucinating. I'm freaking tripping, Mom. And I remember what I saw. Good Lord, I was on some powerful crap. I was yelling that all the way out to the car. The patients in the waiting room were apparently horrified or amused. On the way home, I got into a story about something me and a friend did, and my mom asked me, What else did you and him used to do? I looked her dead in the eye and said, Ha, huh, girls, and, and slammed my head into the window and passed out. I woke up pulling my stitches out. I came to mid pull. So yeah, anesthesiology is some wicked stuff. Story 15. So about two weeks before I had a back surgery, L4 or L5 laminectomy, I asked all of my wittier friends for some funny stuff to say before going into the OR. Most were along the lines of, well, I guess I can't back out now, or something of that nature. One friend, however, told me about a post he had seen where before an operation, someone said, Doc, am I going to be able to play piano after this procedure? The doctor responds, well, of course. And to that, the patient replies, good, because I couldn't before. Dumb joke, I know, but for some reason, I decided that was going to be my funny comment before going under the anesthesia. So come the day of surgery, I'm getting prepped and transferred to the OR, and then bam, I'm waking up in recovery. I'd missed it, or so I thought. I very slowly started to mumble the question about my ability to play the piano because I had come this far, and I was not going to leave without saying it. With that hesitation, the doctor at the foot of my bed goes, no, you can't play piano. You never learned how. I was stunned. Had he heard the joke before? Turns out I had asked the question after they administered the harder stuff, and I didn't remember. He had a good laugh, the nurse to my side had a laugh, I laughed, probably because of the morphine, and all was right in the world. Story 16. What's with all these dentists putting people under for wisdom teeth extractions? I just put a freaking mask over my nose and kept telling me to breathe through your nose as smoke and tooth chips were coming out of my mouth. He told me he didn't believe in putting people under for tooth extractions. He told me during my checkup a few weeks later that it was the hardest extraction he'd ever done. That had he known it was going to turn out like it did, he would have anesthetized me. He had to remove my bottom left wisdom tooth in sections as it was rather large, impacted, and completely covered by my gums. The first three were a breeze and I thought it was going to be a cakewalk with some perk set in the end. I freaking earned that good stuff. He did get a chuckle out of me when he told me, Doing good. Almost done. I'll write you a script for some bottled Christmas cheer when we're done. Extraction took place on December 20th. Story 17. The only time I've been put under for surgery was when I was four years old to put a camera up to find out where there was something in my urine. Since I'd never had any kind of procedure done before, the nurses wanted to prick my finger to get my blood type. Well, I flipped the heck out at seeing the needle and ended up needing six nurses to hold me down. There was one for each limb, one holding me in the chair, and one to do the prick. Right after, I passed out cold for about 45 minutes, according to my mom. The next thing I remember is being in the OR with the nurse telling me to come backward from 10 and not looking at my hands since she was putting in the needle for the IV. My response was, I don't like counting backwards. Then I looked right at my hand and said, Wow, it looks just like a rug needle. Then I passed out again. I also remember waking up during the procedure and kind of looking around the room a bit, spotting a TV, which I assume is showing the inside of my urethra or bladder, asking, Change the channel? And probably blacking out again. All in all, it was a pretty memorable first and only surgery. It took six freaking nurses? How strong was this guy at four years old? Story 18. I actually have an answer for this. When I was 21, I had my tonsils out. As I was being prepped for surgery and speaking to my surgeon, a nurse gave me an injection. I looked at my doctor and went, Wait, that's not it, is it? I'm not ready. Meaning the anesthesia. The doctor told me no, that wasn't the anesthesia, and that he'd tell me when it was time. A few minutes later, as I was being wheeled into the hallway, everything got loopy and slowed down. I gestured for the doctor to come close. I grabbed him by the shirt and wagged my finger at him like an old lady and said, You lied to me. I heard him laugh and that's the last thing I remember. Story 19. I had appendicitis when I was 19, the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. The nurse comes in and I'm not in a gown yet, don't know why. Anyways, she says, We're going to give you some Dilaudid for your pain. I'm thinking, heck yeah, this stuff hurts. She proceeds to give me the meds. I feel warm in my arm at first and then warm all over. I'm in La La Land. The nurse tells my dad jokingly that I'm a lightweight. A short time afterward, I think, the nurse walks in and says that they need to prep me for surgery and that I need to get undressed. She helps me get out of my clothes and into a gown, then looks at me and says, Your underwear too. They need to come off. Right at that time, this little lady walks in. She's in her 20s and I notice she has a bonnet on and a long skirt. She's a Mennonite that works in the hospital doing registration. I proceed to take my boxers, which were covered in sweat from the fever I had, whip them around my head like a freaking cowboy and sling them at the poor, poor lady. Needless to say, my aim was true and they nailed her right in the face and slid down her chest very, very slowly. I remember the horrified look she gave me and then I passed out. The next thing I remember was being on the operating table and the doctor telling me to count back from 100. All I could get out was, pow, right in the kisser, as I slowly faded away. 
I still wonder what that doc thought when I said that. Story 20. An ace theologist. Okay, how are you feeling now? Me. Mix lame joke. Oddly, at this point, the room starts cracking up. No way was that funny, right? An ace theologist. Told you so. Turns out he gave me a little interrogate amnesia before a spinal block. Endured my stupid joke, then told the room, Watch this. He's going to say the same dumb thing again, word for word. Bonus story. Another surgery. Docs are cool. They let me be awake so I could watch it for fun. Surgery is happening. I'm watching him on the monitor as he works on my messed up joints. It's pretty cool, but hard to follow. Surgeon graciously explains things to me as little as he works. I'm biting my tongue, trying not to annoy him by asking too many questions. But of course, I'm on meds. I probably got a little chatty. Last thing I remember, I say something. He just looks over at the anesthesiologist. Good night. I want the ability to do that at my job. Someone's giving me lip, but just not to the anesthesiologist. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you made it this far, I'm sure you'll also enjoy... Doctors, what's your this just got even worse moment? Story 3 was too good. See you in that video.